Hey friends, today we're going to have a little deep dive into the world of Tool, and I have some really exciting things to show you. If you watched my forensic sewing video on Beyonce's Renaissance Tour bodysuit, which was made by Alexander McQueen, you'll know that the bugle bead embroidery was done on a base of a stretch tool. If you haven't seen that video, I'll pop a link for you up here. The close-up shots we got of the bodysuit made the tool look very similar to power mesh, which, if you're unaware, is a really firm type of stretch fabric that's commonly used for the back bands of bras. YouTube commenter Galley Cat asked a really good question about the tool. They said, is there a resource you reference for different kinds of tool fabrics? And, two-part question, does power mesh fall under the tool category? Both such good questions. And Galley Cat, you were the trigger to make what I'm about to tell you happen. So thanks to you and to everyone else who asks questions, you are my favorite. And this is where our story begins. I woke up the morning after I published that video to a message from someone who works for a fabric company that has supplied McQueen for decades, saying that they'd seen your very question, Galley Cat, about tool fabrics and asked if they could send me a swatch pack so that I could share it with you. It's been a couple weeks because international shipping is so slow, but the swatches arrived today and I'm so excited to be able to share this learning opportunity with you. Look, here they are, so excited. Don't worry, I'm gonna turn my camera around to give you a closer look. Before I switch my camera around, just a very special shout out to Miss Diamond Pearl, my fabric fairy godmother and also gorgeous drag queen for sending me that message and these swatches and to Top Fabric where she works. This isn't sponsored. I'm not actually even sure if they know that Miss Diamond sent the swatches, but it's exactly the kind of information that I think could help someone trying to figure out what kind of tool to buy, so we're going to do a little exploration of each one, and I've also added in a few comparisons from my own stash. The first group of three shares a very similar weave structure. If you look up close, you can see that the holes are rectangular and stacked at an offset like little bricks. We have three weights, a heavy body stocking, a stretch tool slash sheer body stocking, and a stretch illusion tool, which is the lightest and sheerest of them all. I've also pulled a piece of power net from my own bra making stash. This is the same brick structure, but in terms of weight, it lives between the heavy body stocking and the stretch tool. So it's like the second heaviest of what we've got in front of us. Again, this is a popular material for bra backs. The heavy body stocking would be great for something if you wanted even firmer support, and I think both the lighter ones would be solid candidates for beadwork. This one, the stretch tool, specifically says that it's regularly bought by design houses like Iris Van Herpen and McQueen, and although there's no way to tell for sure, I believe that this is the one that was used on Beyonce's bodysuit. And how cool is that to be holding the same fabric that was used to make that amazing piece? It's worth noting that depending on what beading techniques you use and even what designs you bead with those techniques, this may limit the stretch of your fabric. So just because something is this stretchy without beads doesn't mean that once you apply the beads it's going to be equally stretchy. That's a whole separate rabbit hole though, and I have more swatches to show you. Next up, I have a group that share a different construction style. All of these have a little hexagonal hole, kind of like a honeycomb. This is one of the strongest shapes in tool construction. It's a weave structure shared by bobbinette, which unfortunately I don't have a sample of here at the moment, but bobbinette is a cotton net, which is a kind of common fabric used in corslets and interior bodice structures because it's super strong and also really lightweight, so you don't get too sweaty in there. This soft nylon tool lives up to its name. It's not at all stiff, and it has a pretty generous mechanical give in the crosswise direction and a tiny little bit lengthwise. I would call this like a midweight tool. In comparison, we have a super lightweight non-stretch illusion tool. It's also nylon, and it has the same weave structure. You can see compared to the first one that this is woven with a lot thinner filament and is therefore going to be a lot more sheer against the skin, especially if we started with a color that matched my skin tone. This one also, interestingly, has almost no horizontal give and a lot less mechanical give vertically. It's a lot more stable than the soft nylon tool. These traits, the minimal stretch combined with the super light weave, would make this my personal choice for beading for a project that required tool with no stretch. I also have another one in this category. This is dress net or stiff tool. It shares the honeycomb structure, but unlike the other two, it's quite stiff and the holes are a little bit bigger. The larger holes mean this is a slightly less ideal choice for beadwork. Some smaller beads might fall through the net, but this is exactly what you'd want to add volume to a skirt or use in a petticoat. Next up is the nylon veiling tool. This is super, super sheer. This is extra wide, super lightweight, but as you can see, it's wildly stretchy in one direction. And that means that it'll sag under the weight of beadwork if we pull the beadwork in that direction. I really want stability in both directions for my sort of ideal beadwork base. But for a veil, when all of the directionality is going this way, right? If you imagine the stretch is going across the veil and then the area of stability is kind of going down like this, it's a great option because it's really, really lightweight and it gathers up beautifully so that you can collect it at the top for the little veil comb. 
Moving away from man-made fibers for the first time in this video, this sample is 100% silk tulle. Silk was used to make tulle long before nylon was invented. Actually, the Junon dress by Christian Dior uses silk tulle instead of nylon tulle as a base for the petals. Similar to the soft nylon tulle that we already looked at, the silk has a little bit of give in one direction and a lot in the other, so if you're going to use it for beadwork, you'd want to be super careful not to overstretch it as you mount it. Additionally, the silk tool is by far one of the most fragile parts of Junon now, so for longevity's sake, it wouldn't be my first choice for beadwork, but it is a really gorgeous fabric to work with. The last sample in my little stack is called Sports Mesh, and it's one of the more opaque ones, as you can see. This one actually shares the diamond construction of the veiling tool, but it's been woven with a multi-filament thread, kind of like woolly nylon, to give it a little bit of additional recovery and bounce. There's a note written on this card that says too stretchy for beading, and I'm inclined to agree. A timbre hook would really catch on this fabric, and it's just got entirely too much stretch to be a useful beading base. It'd be a great option for sheer inserts in activewear or a base layer inside of something, but not so much for beads. So that's the end of my swatches from Top Fabric. Thank you so much again to Miss Diamond and also from Top Fabric if they do know that you sent swatches. Thank you so much. So I honestly made my month. My two standouts from the batch, specifically remember for beading purposes or like bead base purposes, are the non-stretch sheer illusion, which remember was the very most lightweight of the hexagonal structured tools, and also the stretch illusion tool, which was the lightest of the stretch brick type structure. I'd really love to try beading on both of these. I have no idea what to make. So probably not a full length Beyonce style bodysuit, but if you have suggestions or things that you might like to see me make, please leave them in the comments. That'd be so much fun to do something like with you guys and take you along for the ride. I think that would be great. While we're here, I do want to show you one other sample from my stash, and then we can talk briefly about tool nomenclature. This is called Invisible Tool. It's the fabric I used as a base for the beadwork on my wedding dress, and I chose it because it's very fine with very small holes, and it's strong with minimal stretch in both directions, which I've already mentioned is something that you do kind of look for when you're looking for a beading base. Its stretch behavior is really similar, actually, to the non-stretch illusion tool from Top Fabric, but you can see that the holes are a lot smaller and the construction is different. As a result, the invisible tool has a little bit of a sheen to it, which you'd see if you wore it over your skin, and it's not something that really comes through with the non-stretch illusion tool, which can be a bonus depending on what you're looking for. I just wanted to share that one briefly as a comparison because it's one that I have worked with. Now, the second part of Galley Cat's question was around whether power mesh falls into the tool category, and this is tricky, and it's frustrating, and there's not an easy answer, and that's really frustrating specifically because it would make shopping for these fabrics a lot easier. And it's also why I spent so much time describing the weave structure and what it looks like of all those different samples to you. The Oxford Dictionary definition of tool is a soft, fine, silk, cotton, or nylon material-like net used for making veils and dresses, which is super vague and unhelpful. Within the category of open weave fabrics, if we call them that, you'll encounter these words like tool and net and mesh, and then they'll have modifiers like sheer, soft, invisible, illusion, stretch, heavy, firm, stiff, whatever, right? A purist might argue that certain open weave fabrics are not to be classified as tools, and to be fair, they'd technically be right, but if you're on the hunt for a fabric with a particular behavior that needs to serve a certain purpose or do a certain thing, right, especially online, you're really just going to have to look at all those categories and zoom in on some photos and read some product descriptions to see whether the tool that you're looking at or whether the fabric that you're looking at is going to meet the needs of the project that you're working on. Personally, I would call power mesh a mesh and not a tool, or a net and not a tool. But the two stretch options that look like lighter weight power meshes are both labeled tool from Top Fabric, and they're the ones selling the fabric. Do you see what I mean? No, it's not the best answer as far as searching for the right tool is concerned, but if you think about it in terms of sort of the structure and therefore the behavior that you want, hopefully you'll be able to find what you're looking for. Thanks again for following along. Thanks again to Miss Diamond for making my whole entire month with these swatches, to Galley Cat for the question, who is the reason this all started to begin with, and your action items from this video, you have two, are to let me know what kind of projects you'd like to see me make with these fabrics, and two, of course, to let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks! Bye!